Hello and welcome to Taking Liberties episode 21. Can you believe it? We're 21 episodes in this year. Uh, and today we have our, uh, well, actually we have Zeev joining us from Victoria. G'day. Uh, Lee joining us from Western Australia. No, I can't believe it's 21 episodes in. You're lying. You're from the <laughs> government. This is a communist conspiracy. <laughs> <laughs> I, need to, I need to hyphenate my name to avoid being tracked by the government because, you know, yeah. that's how but through grammar. And Tim yes, thank from, you, Sovereign Citizen Lee. Yeah, Go and, and Tim from uh, Victoria as well. Yeah, so, uh, more Southern Victoria. More Southern Victoria. <laughs> and, and thanks, Lee, for giving away the fact that we will be talking about the census. Just remember, it, August yep. 9, do it online. <laughs> yep. There is the census. Uh, I, I, if you haven't heard the... Uh, if you haven't heard the advertisements yet, uh, you probably have been living under a rock, in which case mm. you will be rudely, rudely uh, told tomorrow to do the census or risk a $180 fine per day. We will talk about that later, but we're first going to talk about, mostly because we spoke about the Aboriginal, interve sorry, the NT intervention and uh, what was going on in the detention centres last week. Uh, and I suppose we're going to be talking about that Bill Lee cartoon, Bill Lee cartoon, because well, everybody's been talking about it. It certainly got a reaction. It well, mm. yes, and I, I, that was what was intended. Now, I've described it as basically an incident where Bill Leak has quite effectively uh, poisoned the well. Now, if you aren't familiar with that, please look up the Wikipedia definition. But poisoning the well is effectively where you might have almost or very large levels of support and to fracture the support what you'll do is you'll go in and say oh well if you agree with that you must also agree with this uh it's a common tactic typically used by feminists uh under the mott and bailey scheme where they'll uh retreat to their they'll make all sorts of absurd claims and always retreat back to but feminism is about men and women being equal which so, so what so with. yeah so what alleged consensus did he poison in your mind so and and as i discussed this in several places prior to this uh, this particular cartoon uh the general consensus was that there needed to be major uh criminal justice reform in uh in the northern territory and it had to do with the fact that there were a lot of first time non-violent offenders with anywhere between 30 days and six months prison time uh, for, again, they're nonviolent offenders. Uh, well, what, what were the offences they were put in jail for? So the ones I linked on uh, in the ALS group, so the most prominent one that stood out to me was 30 days, uh, where this young girl was basically a uh, passenger in a car that was stolen. She had nothing to do with the crime. She just happened to be there, uh, was listed as an accomplice and had to spend 30 days in jail. Now, it's part of the Northern Territory's sort of tough love, scared straight policies. Uh, unheard of anywhere else. You would not do that in, in New South Wales. You certainly wouldn't do it in uh, Victoria. So, I mean, like there's, there's a clear problem there. Um, well, you have to look at, you know, why this, you know, law and order, you know, crackdown has been implemented. And that's because, it's an you know, I, of course, uh, of course, it's, you know, it, it goes too far. But you have to look at, you know, why, what's caused this massive re overreaction. And you can't deny that there is massive, you know, social dysfunction in in remote and regional Aboriginal communities that has caused, caused this reaction. I well, not really, because, you know, like, over <laughs> politicians overreacting to appeal to, you know, law and order type conservative voters is not exactly like a new thing. Yeah, and plus, so, I can pull out, plus, I so can actually, sorry, plus I can actually cite, because I did in the ALS group, uh, the uh, Australian Institute of Criminology study, which shows that the crime rate in Northern Territory is not actually any higher than anywhere else, uh, except the ACT which has a really, really, really low crime rate. Uh, which, uh, uh, Libertarian and I, yeah. Uh, well, so, so, so everything is just rosy in, in you know, Aboriginal communities then? Not rosy. It's just not any worse than anywhere else. Have you yeah. ever been to one? In terms of crime rates, let's qualify yeah, that yeah, statement. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let me, let me, yes, I should qualify in terms of crime rates. 
yeah. yeah, but that that was that that's just according to the Australian Institute of Criminology. I mean, what, what they would they know about criminology? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it's so. I mean, yeah. There are problems with remote communities uh, in Western Australia and Queensland and the Northern Territory. Uh, I don't think anybody denies that. Uh, we, well, we talked about it all last week. We've talked about it previously. Welfare, all the rest of it. And, and let, let's be real. Like, it's not It's not like those dynamics are not unseen anywhere else in the world. Like, if you go to any significantly poor community where there's, like, welfare dependency, uh, intergenerational welfare dependency, you see that as well. So there'll be suburbs in Perth and suburbs in, in major cities where you have that sort of dynamic, uh, it's just not as bad because you're in the city as opposed to being in the middle of frigging nowhere. Um, so I the fact that I don't, I don't think, I don't think that ever, over, ever justifies an overreaction. I mean, really. So with the Northern Territory, I didn't Convention say stuff, it was justified. I'm just explaining this is has what led has led to this situation. Sure. I mean, I mean, I'm, I'm explaining, like, we've seen the symptom, but I'm trying to get it back to what's the cause. Yeah, so the cause is middle-class voters want things to be a certain way. They see something they don't like. They encourage politicians to... They say politicians... Get politicians to do something, and this is what they do. I mean, this it, it's... it's you see it in Western Australia. You see it everywhere. You see it all, all over the place. Maybe not the exact same thing. It's how we the got same, the lockout laws. Same, same, yeah, how you got the lockouts. Mm. It's how we got hoon laws in, in Western Australia. Like, it's it's, it, it's always the case that poor people do something that middle class voters don't like. The government then does a thing, and you just change the thing, and you get a result. Um, but isn't it also the fact that progressives uh, have... You know, they they won't allow the welfare tap to be turned off, and they also won't allow these you know remote communities where there's absolutely nothing there, no jobs, no prospects of anything. They won't they 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 want these communities to you know stay alive. They don't want them to be shut down. Sure, but that's it'd be, it'd none be a of that has for it these to Aboriginal do with people to live you know, in a cities. Man mandatory minimum mandatory. laws. It's yeah. I mean, like. We can all agree on that sort of stuff, but that's that's totally separate from the issue of street three strike laws and mandatory minimums and all this kind of stuff. Like that's that's a separate issue. I, I would disagree. There's actually a consensus on it. I think essentially you had dead silence on the right, and then the left were kind of starting to get to that point of maybe saying, well, maybe this is a thing we should do something about, and maybe maybe the sort of the undecided middle was starting to think this is something to do something with. But I think that the, the, the result is still the same with the Bill Lee, Bill Lee cartoon. It's now divided into into two camps. You've got Bill Lee's a racist, Bill Lee's not a racist. That's the end of the debate. Like, you know, we really should be well, continuing to talk about criminal justice. Reform. Like, that, like a lot of what we're seeing here is a result of that. Um, Look, and and also, and not just, not just re specifically Mandarin yeah. Immunity, but just, just like this particular approach to, okay, we've got problem kids, Let's send them to prison. So you know, like there'll be other situations where you get that same sort of thing, uh, and we need to talk about that as well. So it's not not just mandatory minimums are the only thing to talk about in criminal justice. How we run prisons, all of that's also on the table. But I think mandatory minimum sentencing is like one significant part of this that was kind of being talked about, and now it's not. Okay. So if I interrupt, you know, I start. Look, with it, yeah. uh, well, no, I was I was interrupting you, but okay. what all I wanted to say was. Uh, look, the Bill Leak debate is um, a debate that has gone on for a week. Um, Indigenous uh, custody as an issue has gone on for decades. This is a high point, of course, that, you know, everyone's listening to the issue right now after the um, Four Corners story. Um, and obviously, Bill Leak has sucked some pretty valuable public attention time because public attention will reduce in the normal course of things for this kind of story over time. Um, he has made a fair point, I think. Um, but on the other hand, there are a lot of fair points to make in this discussion. Um, and I think that there's been this tribal reaction between everyone calling him racist or not. And I think there's, there's a fair point there to be made that perhaps uh, that is the outcome, perhaps unintended, perhaps not, by Bill, that um, he's making a point now about political correctness that perhaps didn't have much to do with a, an agenda of criminal justice reform um, in the Northern Territory. And um, 
But he was outraging people who, you know, weren't offering a decent solution anyway. So it's not like he's... Well, perhaps so, hang on. Were, so, perhaps so, so, so what's the Let's solution not... now? Hang on, hang on. I want to know what the solution is now. So what are you we talking about? Yeah, yeah, yeah. What do you think the solution is now? To, based on well, what, well, well, what the, what the progr uh, progressives... I don't care what the progressives think. I don't care what they think right now. I want to know what the solution is. You've said that they were not people who were, like, going to contribute to any solutions. So I want to know yeah, what that, the solution is now in your mind. The, the, the solution is is to cut off the welfare and try and shut down these remote communities where there's just nothing, uh, nothing there. That, that's that's what I think. So sure, you, that's but that's that's, that's 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 and and I you know those things are, are probably worthy goals. But that's not going to happen you know anytime soon. Like. Yeah, because of the progressives who think that, oh, you know, they need to Well, no, to it's not even that. Like, no, it's I mean, not even the progressives. Welfare is a bipartisan, yeah. it's a bipartisan policy. I've you know, never, the master of welfare is not just progressive. Well, well the conservatives... The conservatives are on board for it too. And, the, and the conservatives then, would like to remove, like, sh you know, shut down Aboriginal communities or would like to remove, well, you know, I'm welfare actually, dependency, I'm, I'm but actually, they're scared of being called racist. That's the thing. They're no, scared of, not, you know, the left going feral at them. No, it's... it's no, it's it's probably because they freaking lose elections over it. You know, if you're if you start saying I'm going to go to these remote places and tear people like shut them down, the first thing that comes into pe normal people's minds, at least my mind, is a bunch of police running around picking up a whole bunch of Aboriginal kids and putting them somewhere else. I'm sitting there going like, that's actually a terrible mental image to project. No conservative politician wants to be thought off that way. Uh, yeah. so, which is well, which that is would the, be the media. Beat no, that's that's not the media. Oh. That's not the but media. That's not. literally just the, the mental media, image that comes it's just from when the you describe. Image. Yeah, that's, that's the mental image that comes from when you describe as I'm going to go out there and shut down those Aboriginal centres. Yeah. That is the mental yeah. image that comes to my mind. No media put that to me. That's what I thought yeah. the moment you said I'm going to shut down the Aboriginal centres. Messaging is very important. I mean, we need we need to say things. I think if they had the if way, they had the determination you know. to do it, they could do it and get it, and. Okay. Well, Tim, I don't know if that's the case. Uh, okay. the, the The fact is that determination is is not all that's needed because messaging is uh, a very important part of politics. That, uh, as we have seen in the last election or more, um, is very difficult. And yeah. very easy to get wrong. Um, and, and we had uh, Malcolm Turnbull apparently making the case for corporate tax cuts, and I'm so sorry to divert, but very briefly. But who knows what that case is right now? Nobody really knows. Um, it was a comprehensive failure. Now, um, the point I make simply is that messaging is incredibly hard, um, and that's why uh, politicians shy away from tough issues as well. Anyway. Yeah. That's I, I mean, I think on top of that, like, okay, let's just let's just say, okay, we actually somehow by some miracle actually tackle this welfare thing. We, you know, we start, uh, we take away all the subsidies for these these uh, these communities. Well, that's not the only thing that's holding these people back. Like, it's not like if you just take away those things, then we're going to be, you know, they're going to be rolling around in some sort of Edenic paradise where, you know. Uh, you know, everything's gonna be great and wonderful and, and peachy. Like this, this, this. You know, like unless you give them property rights, you give them in the cities unless, that unless you are abolish basically crimes. labor regulation in the Northern Territory, which is you know, I mean, like almost wholesale. Like you need to completely reduce, eliminate the minimum wage. Like there's so much more than just those couple of things. Because mm -hmm. if you took away those things, but you didn't get rid of, deal, didn't deal with labor regulation, you didn't deal with uh, property rights. They'd, they'd just be poor. Like they, I mean, you essentially, you'd end up with all of them living in town camps in, in major cities. Like it's not going to fix the problem. cities for jobs and education. I mean, sure, yeah, it won't. It, it, it won't, you know... You know it'll be easy. Right. But they can't get a job. If you're illiterate and, you've got, and you're an alcoholic and you don't have a stable family and you don't have a permanent address because you can't... You know, these people end up living in town camps on the edge of, of cities, you know, and, and also they might get moved on by the cops every couple of months. A better like, chance for, you know, to, you know, rescue people from those from those communities if they're living look, in just the outer no, suburbs, then... But they're not true. living in the suburbs. They're living in shanty towns. That, yeah, I mean, that's not like... What if you're not like these people are going to move into the suburbs and, get a, you know, get a cat and, you know, live sort of 
uh, Leave It to Beaver style. Like, there's, this is way, way bigger than just we need to get them into city. Like, if you get, you get them into towns, they still can't get a job. You know, they're still yeah. never going to be able to job. If they don't say, have an education, they can say, barely speak English, they're alcoholics, if they've got a, cr a criminal record, what the hell are they going to do? These people can't get jobs. That's a fair point. Yeah. I think well, in so terms they're just of... better off in the middle of nowhere then, is that what you think? Well, no, I'm just saying it's much bigger than you just fix two things and everything. Yeah, I, I, I know it is, but I'm saying, you know, putting them where there's more opportunities, yes, there still will be these barriers, of course, but that would still be better than the present situation. I'm not offering a magical solution I'm not sure it would either. be. I'm not entirely for sure. For some, it either. might be. Maybe not for the worst case um, offenders yeah. that you're putting forwardly, but for other people living at the margins, perhaps who don't have those severe criminal records, um, perhaps, I don't know, they might I, have kids, those kids might go to so, relatively normal schools. I, don't, I mean, if they're welfare dependent, they're, not gonna, they're basically going to move into welfare in cities. Yeah, yes, that's yes. I, mean, still, I mean, like cities are full of an underclass of people who are welfare dependent. Yes, like, that's, unless that's you're going to completely true. eliminate the welfare state, which is uh, never, yeah. I don't I, think it's going to ever happen in our lifetimes. I, I was, I was also going to say yeah. the the other problem that this creates, where you're moving these people uh, into the urban centres, is the is the situation that was uh, there prevalent in um, what was it Redfern, right? The place was just a freaking shithole uh, yeah. until until it got gentrified. Um, and that's it becomes ridden with crime like you mm. can't just uproot people like this man it doesn't work it has historically yep. never worked uh and like quite frankly the only other people that i know of that have project, projected sorry tried and done this type of policy are the freaking maoists like the great leap forward is what you've just described where people got plucked out of like you know their rural communities and just well, dragged I don't think into Tim cities. Tim is calling for yeah, them to be forcibly taken. I think he's just <laughs> saying for make them work in smelters. Do it. I think he's just saying <laughs> that welfare payments should be um, uh, cut off. Basically, if you choose to live in that remote location and can't find work, you, you, you're going to have to move. That's Tim's sure. point. I, I, I don't sure. think that he's sure. saying we should take the cops and throw them there. Yeah. Right. That's yeah, very good. I, 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 and, and I want to say, can I just say for the record, like I actually think we, we need to look at that as a thing, but it needs to be part of a biggest long, like a long term strategy. Like you yeah. can't just you can't just my, cut them off and my, think that things are going to be good for them. My, I mean, my, no, my, yeah, it, so it's, I, it's, there's there's yeah, this is a the, massive issue. Yeah, it may not like, be good for a lot of them. It yeah. may be good for some of them. We so, don't know. Go on. So here's the thing. I um I it's not as if I don't disagree with any of these things. I, I think I think getting them off the grog, getting them off the welfare, uh, getting them into jobs, all admirable things. But from my perspective, none of that starts until you can start talking about property, right? Stable. Yep. Mm. Once you have property rights down, and you look at it, you look at the history of things. As soon as you have an understanding of property rights or like some sort of covenant where you can have property, um, all of a sudden, then you start getting all those other things. You start getting stable employment. You start getting, um, you know, basically education going. As soon as you have that, as soon as you lock down the stability of housing, right, that's when everything happens. And I think we need to actually have, like, as a starting point for, for you know, the First Peoples, uh, a discussion about what it means for them to actually have property. Because well, this is now, what Tim Wilson has said for a long time, isn't it? The it now is. Liberal member for um, Goldstein, Melbourne, Goldstein. 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 Yeah. Yes, yeah. So uh, he, yes, he's and, made a big deal of this. Yes, of course he has, and he and I agree with this on many times. Uh, and and it's mm. just because any way you look at it throughout history, once you get property rights down, everything else starts working, right? You can have a whole bunch of other shit around it. You can have the biggest fucking welfare state. But until someone, uh, until people understand that they have something that is theirs, right? It's nothing. They don't care. But that's also not a magic magical solution either. I mean, obviously, what I propose is not a magical solution. Neither that is no. not going to be magical either. What nobody's proposing well, a magical I, I, solution. If nothing so. else, if you give them genuine property rights over you know large tracts of even remote areas of Western Australia and the Northern Territory and Queensland, like. There's a lot of stuff under the ground that they could then essentially do deals with mining companies to have, be able to be extracted. But then the progressives always go um, in the way and say that, you know... Sure, okay, but that's why... This is know, a bit... This is a bit... It's really a separate discussion of, like, how you strengthen property rights and how you don't have 
you don't need four thousand approvals to open a mine. Any you need... proper solution, oh. you're always you're always going to get the progressive screaming that any change from the current situation is racist or trying to you know whiteify the Aboriginal people. Fine, fine. Let's have that fight then. Let's actually take that fight straight to them. Let's actually go look. This is actually something that improves their livelihoods, right? Why don't, why don't conservatives just get back behind the liberals and go mount the actual case for improving people's lives through proven, effective ways to get them to where they want to be? Because have, they don't want to be called racist by the left. That's who, the main no, thing. As if they care. No, they don't care. The Cubans don't give a crap. Yeah. Man, I'm yet, like, seriously, Andrew, the only time Andrew Bolt ever talks about Aboriginal people is when it's part of the culture wars. You know, whenever yeah. whenever these conservative commentators, they, they never, they never, you know, they, Look, <laughs> they're guys, basically, can we the conservative movement is more busy people's... fighting the culture war than it is fighting for property rights and pro fighting for economic freedom. Let's be completely real. Can, 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 None of these people are we... serious about it. They're, they're about as serious about property rights as the progressives are. Uh, I don't know if that's the case. Firstly, I've seen references to Tim Wilson's work on Bot's blog. Uh, mm -hmm. Secondly, um, we're getting into this um, tribalistic, the progressives are after us, the conservatives don't care. Who does this help? This this doesn't help anyone. It's just... Um, I'm it's, talking you know, about one of the, the limitations on implementing yeah. solutions. Yeah, I, I accept what you're saying, Tim. There is electoral disquiet, there is media disquiet. All, all of these things are true, but the fact is that it... it I mean, I don't know if... Assuming that entire classes of people are, are enemies rather than people to be convinced is the way to go. That's all I'm saying. Uh, and, and even people, progressives, what have you, can be open to being having their minds changed and to going along with the program. Anyway. So, yeah, I accept that there'll be um, a debate, but let's not, you know, dismiss half or more or even the media or the journalists or what have you is, is totally um, lost causes in all respects just because they have some preconceived views. I, um, I, I don't... Can I, can I just interrupt just after the that? Same, the same with conservatives so-called. Absolutely. Leave. And I think that's oh. why it makes mandatory minimum such a great topic to talk about because it's one little shitty bit of policy we can fix. It's not a huge, you know, it's not a huge thing. At least one heart, you know, at least potentially 50% of the political spectrum might actually care about it. Even if the other 50% don't care about it, that's cool. As long as I don't stop it, I don't care. You know, like, manager minimums is at least it one small thing to, we can tackle. Yeah. It's We can it's get it done right now. We don't need to spend 400 years trying to un, unpick the Gordian knot. So let's focus yeah. on one small thing we can fix rather than it's trying to fix the case, whole thing, yeah. whole, yeah. you know, whole hog. Yeah. I, I accept that it's that mandatory minimums is an easy case to make, uh, relatively speaking. Uh, that it's really hard. I mean, no other jurisdiction in Australia, I think, has mandatory minimums for the vast majority of offences. There are very isolated mandatory minimums. Um, driving offences really are the only ones where there are mandatory minimums, so-called, I suppose, for driving offences. Um, and even then, they're I'd pretty imagine minimal drugs as well. in a way. Pardon? I'd imagine drugs as well. Oh, drugs? Uh, well... For trafficking. Not least. really. Tra traffic, no. Uh, at least not in Victoria. Okay. Um, I can't say that elsewhere. I, 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 I'll leave it, I'll leave it no to your expertise if you're telling... Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, I just assumed Pardon? that it was an area that drugs... You know, no, no, no. Not, not in Victoria, and I dare say not Australia-wide. Fantastic. Uh, there so, are higher so, offences for... Yeah. trafficking but not mandatory so in that case i will i will use this uh to pivot onto our second topic uh which is the census and basically what a bunch of ass hats the a a abs has been by uh forcing us to so so the abs is going to be taking your name and your address it's very embarrassing for anybody who's not in australia just worth mentioning oh right yes for the benefit no. of those who may not actually yeah, I forgot about those guys. Sorry, non-Australians. Uh, ABS is Australian Bureau of Statistics, uh, as Lee mentioned. Uh, they take, they collect all of the statistics, a lot like you know the National Bureau of Labor Statistics in the United States. Or... Every five years. Yeah. So mm. our census occurs every five years. This is the first time though that they're not only just collecting personal data, but having it attributed to you, 
like your census details um, for the uh, well for the next five years, I think actually. Until and that's online years. as well. Yeah, and it's online. Well, well, they claim the data will be separated, but kind of not. It's not really clear what they're using it for or proposing to use it for, which is part of what undermines the their entire yeah. argument that they should retain the names, really. Uh, it, it's it's just not clear what they need them for. It's so, not statistical data. Go so, on. So the interesting thing is the West Australian Census Director uh, said that there is... So there are two penalties uh, when it comes to the census. There's $180 a day if you don't fill it out. And the other one is $1,800 if you have knowingly mis... Uh, sorry, given incorrect data to the Census Bureau. Now, the West Australian Census Director has said, and he's on the record, uh, and you can go check Lifehacker, who have the uh, entire transcript, uh, as saying that it is absolutely fine for you to fill out the rest of the census, but not your name and address. Mm. Assuming you can do that online. We don't know yet. But yeah, I don't know either. I'm doing the paper form. So, what so I think a lot of people will be ordering paper forms because you can specifically leave off your name and your mm. address. What, one interesting... Yep. Yeah point that I, I, I'd like to raise about the sentence census is, it is the libertarian perspective on the census and that is an interesting one I think because um, if we look for example at um, data collection in a place like Hong Kong which was run by a very uh, libertarian fellow or British libertarian yeah. fellow for Copper a Wayne. good long few decades. Yeah. Pardon? His name was Copperway. Yeah. Yeah, he made he made a very big point about how he never ordered the collection of statistics because statistics and the census in particular are used to uh, engage in central planning. Correct. Without statistics, um, government planners don't really have the slightest idea. I mean, obviously, they usually don't have much of an idea about how to plan out to healthcare or <laughs> education or what have you, but even without even an idea of the population or um, the number of people in a given locality, they don't have the slightest idea in the least how to provide for people. So statistics and the collection of the census is um, rightfully, I mean, rightly, as politicians who believe in the big government state might say, is very important for them as central planners. Um, from a libertarian perspective, it, it is an anathema, you might say, um, to, to divulge that information to the government because it means that um, they have that information and can use it to engage in this very wasteful exercise. All right, Correct. Done. Yep. <laughs> yeah, I mean, like... I... Sorry, you go, Tim. Yeah. Well, sort of, I think that... Uh, main point of the census, well, basically, from what I can see, is just to provide, you know, information on what, what's the ethnic makeup of Australia, you know, what are the, you know, religious, you know, dom denominations, where do most people live? I mean, just, if, you know, to have, you know, up to, up to, up to date information on, on those sorts of things, how many have been to school, uh, university, that sort of thing. Absolutely. Which, I mean, I think there's probably uses for those, for that data. I just don't think it needs to be collected coercively. So, you know. Yeah, like, I mean, that is the main thing. Well, actually, so yeah, I mean, it's, you know, like, there's, there's, I'm sure you, academics and stuff, you'd use this information all the time. And, that, and it's great, you know, good for them. Um, but, yeah, like, academics can also work with incomplete data. Like, you know, they work with a, when they do a survey, they, they don't survey 24 million Australians. They survey, you know, 14,000 people and they sort of extrapolate from that. Sample, so, yeah. Yeah, the sample, that's right. Yeah, so it's... um. You know, like, it, they can work with the fact that it's not coercively taken. Um, having said that, I mean, it's... I think it's one of those things that's probably not going to change soon. It, it, it is what it is. Yeah. So it just comes down to what... And, like, I personally... Yeah, okay, so... Obviously, they don't like central planning, but, like, for me, it's more of an issue that they're sort of collecting... You know, they're creating... Essentially creating files on people, um, yes. which is a problem. Is so, like, I don't mind like giving them my, my data... Because but it's they don't, not like, that I've, big a problem. I've, like, like I, I think if, if, if every libertarian would say, we're not going to do the census because we're rebelling against central planning, like, I don't think it's going to change the fact that we simply plan things. Like, that's going to happen for the future, foreseeable future. Mm -hmm. uh, I think it's mm -hmm. more just, 
let's not have databases of people they can then use to say round up and put in camps, which is what census that's, data is being for in other places. Concern. And probably even, even in Australia. Yeah. Well, like, well, that's the big concern here because yeah. names and addresses are now being retained. So people are very concerned that their personal information might be linked to their name and address. And in that way, you know, you might find out what religion a person is or which isn't compulsory in the census. But if you do fill it out for the sake of argument or you might find out what income level they are or what ethnicity they are or what have you. Um, but the government, guess, they, they collect our data in heaps of other, like our driver's licence has a lot of um, personal information on it. So does, you know, there's... My name and address. Card. It doesn't have anything else. Oh, date of birth, yeah, I suppose. Yeah, date of birth. Uh, I've, I've, yeah, no, no. Actually, yeah. so, what are, so some of the uh, fields that they are collecting that are mandatory actually confuse the fuck out of me. So, like, for example, they've said that they're collecting gender, right? But it's like the, mm. um, it's like that... Uh, it's like the university definition of gender, so it's not just male and female. It's like male, female, plus whatever the fuck you might want to call yourself. Uh, and they've got like, and they've got like, a, yeah, a... whatever unique popsicle you want to be. Uh, and, and I'm sitting there going like, I can understand if you want to know male and female, because you might want to headcount for healthcare purposes. Um, and uh, guys who are on Tumblr who want to have this big argument about, oh, I identify as whatever, whatever. Uh, it actually attack helicopter. Yeah, attack helicopter. It actually doesn't matter except in the case of medicines, right? It literally doesn't That's matter outside of that. It. Yeah, which is the only reason to ever ask it. And which is why I'm saying, like, it belongs on medical information, maybe. I'm not sure why it belongs on the census, right? Mm. That is the part that confuses me. It's just like there is nothing medical at all in the census. Uh, they might mm. be collecting the data for hospitals in which case it makes perfect sense and it the way the question should have been structured are is it are you a biological male or biological female the the question as it stands right now seems to be only there to like in you know just go like well, well that's because wants... for most you know that, ordinary that information people, is politically valuable it's politically... because the answer is that information is politically valuable. Sure. Now politicians and bureaucrats can look at it and say, well, here is the number of people who identify as trans and here is the number of people who identify as male and as female and all of these other categories. And on the basis of that information, they can make electoral decisions about how much money to hand out to people. True. <laughs> Sorry, I'm being well, very I, cynical. I mean, that's, that's very the way cynical. they've been promoting, like being part of the census is that they use that information to do all their, their funding calculations for the states and whatnot. So, you know, I guess there's, that's part of it as well. Again, we don't want central planning, but it's going to happen anyway. So, yeah. In terms of, you know. like, when it asks about your relationship status, it only asks about, you know, have you been, are you married, widowed, or separated? It actually doesn't ask if you're in a relationship, like, just by itself. So it actually only sort of cares about, you know, legal definitions of you know relationships yeah, and really, I, other really I, I, they don't have a de facto option no mm -hmm. i didn't see one when i did the online no but the ex before. no 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 but the explanation says like if you if you no but the explanation says that if you're um if you're a de facto you list as married no oh, well there yeah. you are yeah so, so that means there'll be technically gay marriages being recognized in the census correct in a way <laughs> in a very roundabout way I mean, there's, there's so an do entire... we want to talk about like whether people should dodge the census or not? Okay, like, or so, how do they go about it? Uh, no, so the life the life hacker story the life hacker is the um, article on this is the only one that I've seen that encourages you to do something in a legal way. Uh, everything else is illegal. So giving the wrong name technically illegal. Giving the wrong address illegal. Uh, purposefully mis mis uh, purposefully uh, putting incorrect details in there illegal uh and also not filling it out also illegal but based on mm. what the west australian census director has said you can leave the name and address field blank so if you want to do something illegal <laughs> so, uh, there's so, an article that digital rights watch put together um talking about essentially like what is the history from as best i know of i oh, don't no, sorry it was the electronic uh frontier Foundation. Yep, EFF. Electronic mm -hmm. Frontiers Australia. Yep. They talked oh. about like the history of kind of prosecution, basically saying it's not zero, but it's not common. They deal with a lot of forms. A lot of people fall through the cracks. And essentially, if you can persevere, 
mm. by just dodging appointments with census people of just generally being uh, difficult, don't, you know, avoiding the, the census collectors, you can get away with it. But now that it's uh, online, it's a little bit harder. Yeah, well, but except, I mean, they, they still collect paper ones, so... Yeah, yeah, yeah. You can yeah. just declare yeah. yourself a sovereign citizen. No, yeah. uh, but uh, if, you, if you were getting the paper one, it's too late for that now anyway. You must have ordered it, yep. what, two weeks ago. So Right, okay. Yeah, so, I mean, if I, you have it... It's not necessarily. I think today was the deadline, but anyway. For the yeah, because you don't, like, they collect the census forms, the paper ones, like, uh, well after the census day has been. So, like, you have to enter the data for that night, but they actually don't collect, because like, they send people door to door to collect the forms. Yeah. So, you know, they, and, and if you don't, you know, if you didn't receive it, they, they basically said, if you didn't receive it, like, uh, in time, that's okay, as long as you just sort of keep track of what's going on. You can hand yeah. in the form later. You basically have um, until the 23rd of September to fill it in. That's what yeah. the people yeah. there say. Um, yeah. So, so, yes, don't, so either do something illegal or don't do something illegal. <laughs> if you want to make I've a covered all options. Then go for it. <laughs> I've covered all options, I believe. <laughs> yeah, my, my, only, my only thing is if you're going to say you go, you've gone fishing in the middle of nowhere, don't like, don't sit in your land room with your phone on because of all that metadata stuff. You don't want... I don't, I don't know what the reach of the ABS is, but they don't, you don't want to be found out having a... I uh, doubt they're that competent. I mean, really. They're probably not. The department. I mean, it, well, actually, thing, I know a lot of mates who actually, probably boycott, except they're actually, like, eh, $180 a day is a bit stiff. Actually, yeah, so, it's, it, it's so, like cheaper to not vote, definitely. Yeah. yeah but I was actually going to say, uh, it's their competency that actually brings me the biggest question as to whether they should hold this data. I mean, they basically said, we're going to, like, hash the data right so that you know like even if someone gets it it's going to be encrypted and i sat there and went like but it's data at rest that's sitting there for five years right like assuming you use the strongest algorithm right like a computer like computers are getting faster and faster as long as the person like you know increases their has uh, enough patience yeah, it has enough patience. Within five years, they should be able to break it. Um, now, whether they do or they don't, that's a different question. My point is, your data is at rest for five years. So it needs to be fucking... Well, most of that data is pretty pre usable even after five years. You know, yeah. you know if you list your previous... Because I'm pretty sure you list all your previous addresses and stuff as well, don't you? Yeah. 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 So there's a lot of... A lot of stuff there where even if you, you know, five years plus one day, like it's still going to be pretty helpful for yeah. if you want to try and fraudulently use some of these details. Particularly, yeah, particularly things like it's going to contain your previous addresses, right, which are typically used by credit card companies to determine, yeah. you know, if you're the same person. Um, the other thing, mm. it, the other thing it has is like uh, family names. So many people use their mother's maiden name as a, yep. as a secret password. Uh, because it's the default question, uh, which yep. is why secret passwords are ridiculous and nobody should ever use them. Uh, <laughs> also, straight names and and, pre yep. and schools and all of that stuff. That's all in there. So, I mean, I, I like there should not be any attribution at all, and I don't I don't think they've thought this through. So, um, yeah, don't my 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 best advice is listen to the WA director and don't put your name in. I have a mygov uh, mygov dot gov account, so like I've already given my all my information to the government. Hey, someone's been on welfare. Big brother has you, Tim. <laughs> we'll, pray, we'll pray for your soul as you be drawn into the into the machine. Yeah, mm. I, I actually just discovered about mygov this year because I was told that you know I should sign up for one so that I could see my tax returns. I didn't even know this was a thing. Uh, oh, it's, a, it's such a shit website i mean like it has so many glitches and like what like i tried to change my details once and it wouldn't let me i'm pretty sure that's a design feature but uh keeping that in mind we've gone seven minutes overboard so uh i think this is a good time to call it quits and say that we'll be back next week all right see you, everyone bye, bye. Yeah. all right have a good night